Francis from Artist Central. Now, even if you've never met an artisan, I can guarantee that you've come across their products. This $70 billion industry, which consists of everything from handmade furniture to jewelry to candles and soap makers, is coming online now quicker than ever before. You have Etsy, the largest marketplace for artisans, growing at over 50% year over year. You have the recent introduction of Amazon Handmade, growing at 150% month over month. But as these artisans come online, they start to realize something. It takes much more than just beautiful products to run a successful handmade business. My name is Francis Ayling. I'm the CEO of Artist Central, and I'm here today to show you how we're allowing artisans to get back to doing what they love, creating, while still managing a successful online business. I'd like to introduce everybody to Sarah. Sarah founded Shy Siren, and she makes these gorgeous, one-of-a-kind, handmade pieces of jewelry that she sells on three channels. But being on three channels presents its own unique set of problems. The first of which being listing and editing. Whenever Sarah has to add or edit a product, she has to input the information on Etsy, then she has to go do it on Amazon Handmade, and she has to do it once more on Shopify. This is extremely time consuming and tedious. On top of that, she has to worry about channel specific SEO to make sure those listings actually get found and she actually sees sales. Now, whenever a product's sold, Sarah has to do two things. She has to manually go in and update the inventory across channels so she doesn't oversell that product, and then she has to ship it, box it up, print out a shipping label, and send it on its way. But that's not all the desk work Sarah has to do. She has to manage her social media content. She has to worry about her paid advertisements. That's tracking the effectiveness of those ads and identifying target customers. And then she has her day-to-day -day tasks, like communicating with customers about custom orders and worrying about taxes. So it's clear that creating isn't all they do. And the sentiment we heard over and over again from artisans is that they have to go out and hire somebody to do the work they love doing, the creating, while they're stuck all day in front of their computer. With that in mind, we set out and built Artist Central. Artist Central is a centralized platform that allows artisans to manage all aspects of their multi-channel e-commerce business. List your items through Artist, Channel, or Artist Central and they get automatically placed on the channels you want them on. Inventory is synced whenever a sale is made. You can quickly fulfill orders by having shipping labels generated for you. Day-to-day -day tasks like taxes are much easier with all your orders in one centralized location. And you can create targeted ads with the click of a button and optimize those listings for channel-specific SEO. Now, before we started building any of those features, we started a very thorough customer development process. And what we found was extremely interesting. For every product that an artisan sells, they spend just as much time making that piece as they do all the administrative work behind the sale. In particular, two pain points came up over and over again. The first was inventory management. That involved getting the listings on the channel you want them on and keeping the inventory in sync across those channels. The second was marketing and in specific, channel specific SEO. Now we've just launched a pilot that deals with the SEO problem, but I'd like to run you all through a really quick demo of our inventory management tool. So when an artisan logs onto Artist Central, they see a real life version of how their products are on both Etsy and Amazon Handmade. Those are the two largest players in the space and the two we're most focused on. In some instances, products like the first one here are already on both channels. So when we're importing products, we want a quick image and title recognition software to make sure that there's no duplicates. However, in the majority of cases, products are only on one channel. Now to get these products on the channel that they want, all they have to do is select them, click post to Amazon Handmade, they get a quick notification letting them know that their products are being transferred over, and it's done. This is a product that would usually have taken the artisan up to 30 minutes per listing, and it's done with a click of a button. They're live on the site, and they can now update their inventory from one platform. In this case, let's say they made 17 new products. The product's inventory has been upgraded across platforms and will drop accordingly whenever a sale is made. Now we've designed a very simple, easy to use, and intuitive solution that solves our artisan's biggest pain points. Now we are a software as a service. We charge dependent on the number of listings managed through us. It ranges between $300 and $1,200 per year. Again, we're solely focused on listing at, the point, at this moment, but have identified future product offerings, which will allow us to capture more value as we continue to grow. 
In addition, every time we import a product, we get vast amount of data. Data about what's working about a listing, what's not working about a listing, who those products are selling, and where they're selling to. We can leverage all this data to make strategic partnerships with all the international and local marketplaces that are popping up for artisans, as well as retailers and wholesalers nationwide. Now, when we look at the market, there's currently 26 million makers worldwide, and the tools and services sold to these artisans equates to an $8 billion opportunity. In the US, there's 6.7 million makers, and in our target market, Etsy, where we're hyper-focused, a market that's growing very rapidly, there's 1.6 million makers, and the tools and services sold to those artisans equates to a $400 million opportunity in and of itself. So the next question is, how do we reach these makers? How do we hit scale? There's three one-to-many strategies that allow us to hit that scale. The first two involve targeting artisans where they gather. That's through influencers, people like Handmadeology in the space, who artisans turn to for tips and tricks on how to increase their productivity and their sales. The next is being present at conferences. That's design, material, and wholesale expos. The final is referrals. The artisan community is in essence that, a community. Over 81% of makers share tips and tricks amongst each other when they find something that works. With that in mind, we reward our users for telling their friends. So when we look at our financial projections, in the first year, we'll be primarily focused on product market fit. What we define as product market fit is having 80% of new or edited listings done directly through Art Essential. After that, we'll tap into those go-to-the-market strategies and really hit growth. And we see the typical hockey stick that you guys are so accustomed to and know and love. Now, when we look at the competition, it is e-commerce, so there are tools that artisans could turn to for help. But there's problems, and we've heard the same problems over and over again from our users. The first set of tools only do one thing across one channel, and that's simply not enough for multi-channel sellers. The next set of tools are for much larger companies, sometimes enterprise companies, and they come with a complexity, a user interface, and features that artisans simply can't and don't want to use. In addition, because they more often than not support manufactured products, they don't support the channels that artisans really care about and support a bunch of other ones that makers don't want to be on. Art Essential is the only platform that's end-to-end -end for the growing handmade market. Now here's our team. We're all three full-time, full-stack engineers obsessed with solving this problem for our users. Tanay makes sure that the platform is ready to go and ready to grow. Arturo designs user interfaces specifically tailored for artisans, and I'm primarily responsible for business and sales, reaching out to new makers and bringing them on board. We were just recent graduates of the Nine Mile Cohort 6, have established a sound network of investors and advisors in Seattle. Also, we are, uh, we've been working together for well over six years now, and I've been working with artisans for well over a year through different ventures. We've been able to do a lot in a very short period of time. We identified this particular set of problems in April of this year, at which point we started that extremely thorough customer development process, and we began building the alpha of the listing tool in July. <laughs> we launched that alpha in October with a goal in mind to get 50 users signed up by the end of the year. We hit that goal in under two weeks, are now at 80 users signed up waiting to get on board, who we're working with to build a platform that addresses the needs of the community and a platform that's ready to go big. We'll complete the listing tool and launch it to the public at the end of December and move towards marketing and shipping as 2017 progresses. Artist Central will be the only place on the internet for artisans to manage all aspects of their multi-channel e-commerce business. And I invite you to join us and be a part of that maker movement. My name was Francis, and that was Artist Central. Thank you so much for your time. Pretty awesome. We had a lot of fun working with this company, trying to find out how awesome they are and what they're. What we wanted to find out during the due diligence, market validation was one of the things that we really wanted to look into. The the numbers that they quoted and the size of the market. We did find that there was um, a layer there that would be very interesting for artisans to start using this tool. Um, and also, like you talked, there's uh, some upward and uh, downward. Uh, opportunity as well. Customer engagement and acquisition, oh my god, they're actually, they actually have done a great job, right? I mean, they, they are truly talking to customers before building tools in spite of being engineers. <laughs> uh, product and competition, there are several um, solutions in this space, it's, uh, but, but again, there are, we found that uh, Guru actually did a great, he's over there, <laughs> 
he he put together a big matrix of all the different features and um, and these guys were actually identifying um, the top needs to go towards that. Um, we still had some remaining questions. Um, one of the things that I that like uh, Francis to talk about here is even in this presentation they were talking about the cross-listing as the first uh, thing that they took on. SEO is very interesting as well. Wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, so um, that was an interesting problem that we came across. It's where do we start? Uh, we, were, we talked to all our customers and they, everybody gives us all their problems and it's almost like a, a therapy session there. So it's how do we identify where to start? Um, and the two options that came up over and over again very repeatedly were the cross-listing and the SEO. Uh, we decided to start with cross-listing for a couple reasons. First, uh, we'd be the only one doing it. Nobody else is offering any sort of support to Etsy sellers trying to get to Amazon Handmade or anything like that. Uh, and in addition, we'd be able to provide immediate value. So uh, let me give you kind of a quick example. Uh, one of our users set up their Amazon Handmade store um, a little over a year ago, and since then had only transferred three products over from Etsy to Amazon Handmade just because of the amount of time it took. Um, we got her onboarded, and in under a day, we were able to move 24 listings to her platform. She saw the value in that immediately, and we were able to give her value immediately. Now, when you look at SEO, there are tools out there that artisans could theoretically turn to for help, but the onus for how to improve their listing is always on the artisan. They have to do the research. They have to go in and find out how to improve their listing on their own, even though there are, there are tools to kind of help them through that. What we found through our discussions is the artisans and makers didn't want to do that research. They almost wanted to coach, or they wanted to be told or recommended how best to improve their listings. And in order for us to do that efficiently, we needed some data. And a good way to collect that data is by bringing on all their listings. For every listing we bring on board, we get access to a whole bunch of data about what's working about certain listings, what's not, what to change, how to tweak them. And we're continuing to build that data so that we can develop sound recommendation tools to, to provide value to the artisan immediately, to give them kind of actionable items instead of uh, making them do the research. We see SEO as being the next logical step our kind of progression through the process is we now have all your listings on the channels you want them on. Let's optimize them. Let's get you sales. Let's get you views. Let's make them that much better. And and you also have uh, put out a beta version of it, and you you have a couple of folks trying it out. Yeah. So we actually put out a beta because again we don't like to uh, really code extensively until we get something in the hands of our users. Uh, so we put out a beta that's that's manual that kind of prove that that recommendation hypothesis. Uh, we kind of did more of the grunt work there, kind of scraped the data, did more of the research based on the information we were getting in, but also using the tools that artisans could theoretically use. And one of the, the, the feedback that we got continually from our users was that the recommendation was so important, that it was the one differentiator from other products. It was something that really set us apart. So it's kind of what we're looking forward to build, is we're looking forward to kind of making that the next logical step in the product roadmap. We're 10 seconds away from being tackled. Yeah. Thanks again so much, guys. It was a pleasure.